Good morning. If you're a guest here, I'm thrilled that you're here. My name's Chris. I'm the pastor here at Christian Chapel. And I've just got two quick uh, kind of housekeeping items for our, our Christian Chapel people. Uh, first of all, last Sunday was Kingdom Builders Sunday. We made our commitments to fund what God is doing uh, in our community and all over the world. Through our Kingdom Builders giving, we support the work of 50 missionaries and ministries working in 30 nations around the world. We support um, several local ministries as well, ministering to foster children, women experiencing crisis pregnancies, children from trauma, uh, local elementary school outreach. So if you were not here last week but want to partner with us in that, you can swing by the Welcome Center. Our goal this year is to give away $350,000 to be part of what God is doing all over the world, and we are believing that as He speaks to each one of us and we obey, we're going to get to do that. Um, the second thing, I, I sent many of you an email this past week, kind of uh, outlining for you some things that God had put on my heart for this Sunday. If you did not get that, it's because we don't have you on our distribution list. So it's, it's not that we don't like you, uh, it's that we don't have your contact info. So you can do one of two things. Um, if you would like to receive those, you get maybe 12 or 15 over the course of a year. You can email info at christianchapel.com, just with your name and subject, just put add me. And we will get you on that list for, for future contact stuff. Or on the bottom of your bulletin, there's a quick connect card. You can add your name, email address, and drop it off at the Welcome Center after service. And we would be glad to, to get you involved um, in, in getting some of that information out to you. Uh, the email I sent to, to many of you this week was uh, pretty simple. It was just, I, I feel like God is leading us into a new season as a church. Right? And, and so what I, I want to be very clear from the beginning, this morning we talk about God's plan for us, we're talking about God's plan for you and God's plan for me. Uh, God does not have plans for Christian chapel that do not involve the people of Christian chapel. Right? We are not just some institution, we're not a building, we're not a landmark, we are a, a body, we're a family, we're a community. And so the things that um, God began speaking to my wife and I well over a year ago, uh, that he began speaking to many of our staff pastors, our leaders, that many of you have shared with me over the course of the past year, is just this deep sense that God is leading us into a new season of experiencing his spirit and his presence together. And he spoke those messages to us in a lot of ways. We have um, heard his voice through the scriptures as we have read the stories of what God has done in the past, and we've cried out, God, will you do that again? Will you move like that? Will you heal like that? Will you restore like that? Will you build your church like that? He's spoken to us through the songs that we sing, through the prayers that we pray. He's spoken to us through dreams and visions. He's spoken to us through our friends and our family members. And, and the recurring message we hear again and again and again is there is a new season coming. In uh, December of last year, I was reading a book um, about just what's it look like for a church to be open to the work of the Holy Spirit. And, and in that book, the author quoted Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19, that, that we just saw a moment ago and that we're going to look at today. And as I read those words, it, it was like they jumped off the page and God said, this is my message to Christian chapel for now. And so in January, we went to our, our leadership retreat with our staff pastors and our, our board members and their spouses, and I began to share some of those things with us of, hey, this is what I think God is putting in my heart and, and inviting them into that process of what's it look like? What's God saying to, to do something new in us? And when Angie and I went back to our room that night, it was the, the second weekend of January, uh, I was telling her, man, I, I really just want to stop what we're doing. We're in the middle of our Bigger God series. I said, there's, there's part of me that wants to stop and just preach this Isaiah 43 message Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. I mean, just literally get up, same message every week because it's, it, God was doing it that deeply in my heart. But as we talked and as I prayed over the next couple of days, I just really sensed that that wasn't it. What we were doing is what God had for us. And then over the last couple of weeks, I've just felt him directing us towards this Sunday. And, and so I want to say a couple things to you. First of all, I want to say today is not an event. It is a beginning. We're not coming just to say, God, what will you do right here in this space? Can I get what I need right here, right now? But instead, we're coming to say, God, we, have, we are open-handed, and we're going to follow where you lead. I don't have an agenda for today. I don't have a program. I don't have a plan. We're not launching a campaign. We're not trying to raise funds. We're not beginning a new sermon series. I mean, we Called it something new because there needed to be something on a screen, honestly. I don't know if we're going to keep doing it next week. I don't know if we're still going to be doing this in December. I don't know. All I know is God is saying to us, I'm going to do something new. 
And for me as your pastor, that is incredibly liberating. This past October, I, I uh, was Angie and I's five-year anniversary as the lead pastor of Christian Chapel. And every year that I'm pastor, I understand more and more how inadequate I am in my own strength, power, and wisdom to help you navigate what life throws at you. I can't fix your marriages. Right? I, I can give you some advice, and I can point you to the scriptures, and I can get you some other resources, and I can connect you with counselors. But at the end of the day, there is a, a level of healing in your marriage that only God can bring. Right? I, I can't fix your grief. Now, again, I can point you to the scriptures and tell you that God will comfort you, and I can connect you with others, and we can put you in grief share and equip you and give you tools, but there is a level of despair in your heart that only the Holy Spirit can touch. I can't fix your kids, right? I, I can't, again, parenting principles, practices, prayers, all of these things, but at the end of the day, what needs to happen is your child needs to experience the power of the Holy Spirit magnifying Jesus in their heart, and I can't do that for them, and neither can you. And so as we've started to talk about what's it look like for God to do something new, and as I've been praying these prayers, one of the things that God has put in my heart is for many of us, something new means it's time to stop looking to others to do what only God can do. All right, so, so that's why at the, the end of this morning, there's not going to be a, hey, if you've got this problem, go sign up there. If you've got this, go do that program. But we're going to end this morning just by, by taking a, a, some extended time and just saying, God, what do you want to do? What do you want to speak? How do you want to move? As I said earlier, these ideas come from Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19, it says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Will you pray with me? Will you take your hands and just kind of put them out in front of you with your palms facing heaven? Jesus, we come with all kinds of baggage. Some of it is pain and some of it is pride. But Lord, we all come with a desire for you to do something new in our lives. Lord, will you come today and by the power of your Holy Spirit, will you speak to us in personal and powerful ways? In Jesus' name, amen. As you read through Isaiah 43, you'll find that this is a message God gives to the people of Israel while they're in exile. They have uh, abandoned God. They have turned their backs on him, and he's allowed the consequences of their actions to come. They've been carried off to Babylon. And so they're living in exile, and they're, they're still hearing the stories of the promised land. They remember what it was like when they used to live in their own land, when they ruled themselves, when they walked with God and experienced his blessings. And now for generations, they have been in Babylon. And they're, they, they're, it's, un, it's no doubt at all that they would have started to wonder what God did for our ancestors. Is he really going to do that for us? That promise of hope, that promise of a future, that promise of a land flowing with milk and honey, is he really going to do that for us? And so as you read through Isaiah 43, and, and I'd encourage you to do that later today, it is just full of these remarkable statements of hope. It's God telling his people again and again, I'm going to save you. I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to lead you out. You're going to walk through the waters, but they won't harm you. You're going to walk through the fire, but you won't be burned. It's God telling them, remember what I did when I led you out of Egypt, how I led you out by my hand, and the army that pursued you was destroyed. And so he's, he's just kind of painting this picture for them, and he's saying, look, I, I know you're in a spot you don't want to be in, but what I've done before, I can do again. Right? And, and I know for, for many of us, there are seasons of life that we feel like we're in exile. Right? You, you used to know the promised land. You lived in it with your wife, you lived in it with your husband, but now they're dead or you're divorced. And you're in this exiled loneliness just looking back and thinking, man, I want to get back there. But you can't. 
Right? You're, you're in exile because you remember when your family was whole. You remember when your dad was present. You remember when your mom was involved. And now through some kind of circumstance, that has stopped. And, and you just look back and you think, I, I wish I could go back. I wish my child was still part of my life. I wish they hadn't turned their back on us. I wish they hadn't walked away from the Lord. And even if life is really good in 90% of the areas, there's always that little 10% that you feel like you're in exile. Maybe it's physical exile. You look and you think, man, I, just, I remember when I, was, when I could wake up without pain. I remember when I could sleep through the night. I remember when I didn't wonder if I would still be alive in two years. And now I'm in exile and I'm sick, and I'm hurting, and there's not a lot of hope. But the message of God to us is the same message to the people of Israel living in exile. He says, look, what I did before, I can do again. There's hope. But what's really interesting is, is so, so all through Isaiah 43, he's painting this really big picture of his power, his might, pointing their minds back to what he's done before, and then he gives them four really interesting commands. And the first one is now you know who I am, you know how I worked, you know what I did, now forget it all. Forget it all. He tells them, I want you to forget the former things. See, there's always a temptation for us when we think that God is going to do something new to think that the new thing is going to be like the old thing. So for the Israelites in Babylon, God's going to deliver us great. Where's our Moses? What sea is he going to part? What water is going to crash over our enemies? But God was going to lead them back to the promised land, but it was going to be different this time. Because he's a creator, and he loves to do new things in new ways. And so if you're in a spot this morning saying, God, will you do something new? Will you actually let him do something new? Will you lay down your expectation of, well, God, when you did this for me as a teenager, this is how it worked, and this is what it felt like, and that's what I want. God, last time my marriage was good, this is kind of what my spouse was like. So if you could make them like that again, that would be awesome. Lord, when our family was whole, when my body was whole, this is, you know, and, and we always want the new thing to be like the old thing because we know how that worked. But God, often in seasons where he's calling us into new things, he's going to do it in new ways. And the reason he does that is so that we will continually look to him as the source of the new and we don't idolize these old methods that he used. There was nothing sacred about the way that God led the people out of Egypt. What was sacred was that he led them. And he's teaching them the same thing as they're in their Babylonian captivity. Of, I'm going to lead you out, but it's going to be new. And so what you've got to do, you're going to remember who I am, but I need you to forget how I did it. Because I'm going to do it in a new way. And all you need to remember is that I'm big enough, I'm strong enough, I love you enough, and it's going to happen. So forget about it. And just in case we don't get it, then he says, do not dwell on the past. So I think for many of us, the reason we can't walk into the new season God has for us is because we are firmly entrenched in our past. You've got the stories you tell. Right? And, and your past, it, it shapes you. My past shapes me. I am who I am because of all that's happened before today to this moment. Right? And in our past, some of it is really good. We love it. You love to talk about the family you grew up in. You love to talk about the, the spouse that you have. You love to talk about the schools that you went to, the places you've worked, the friends that you have. We have some of us have a wonderful, rich tradition of God working and moving in our life. And yet in this season, he's saying, forget the former things. What I'm leading you into is not something you have earned through your past behavior, but it is because of my grace and the current move of my spirit. So you've got to stop resting on what you've done and start walking in what I want to do. Right? It's, it's, it's just really, thing. And, and then the other side of that is sometimes our, our past is painful. Right? And, and we dwell on it because we can't get over it. And you know that because it's, it's the story you tell in every new relationship. You begin to form a new friendship. You start to date someone new. You, you engage with a new coworker at work. And, and within those first handful of conversations, you're diving into the, you know, my, my parents, my dad walked out on me when I was a kid, and so I'm just really trying to be different. You know, I, I had this season of sickness, and, and it kind of left me with a, with a limp, and it's kind of held me back from what I want to do. You know, things used to be really good, and then, then the, the, the economy crashed, and now I don't have the resources that I used to have. My kids used to do this, but then they, they kind of turned away, and now they're, and we, we just lead with our pain. We lead with our story. 
And what God is telling us today is, look, that shaped you, but it does not define you. It's time for you to stop dwelling on it. And it doesn't mean it didn't happen. It doesn't mean it wasn't real. But it's time for you to decide, I'm not going to live here anymore. I'm not going to set up camp in this space anymore. My pain, my grief, my suffering, my busted up marriage, it's not going to define me anymore. I'm going to forget it. I'm going to stop dwelling on it. Right? And, and this is not only something God does for us individually. It's something he's calling us to do for one another. Because sometimes I'm really good about, hey, I'll forget my past mistakes. But I won't forget yours. And if you try to forget them, I'll let you know. You try to walk into a new season, I'm like, hey, that's cute. Remember when you, right? You, you come home and tell your spouse, God is working in my life. And they're like, mm-hmm, we've been here before. It'll be good for about three days, right? You're a teenager and you come home and you tell them, hey, man, I feel like God is calling me into something new. And they're like, you can't even do your homework. Why is God going to trust you to go to the nations when you can't even go to class? And so, so what God is calling us to do is not just forget your past, not just stop dwelling on your mistakes, but stop holding things against other people that Jesus has said are over and done with and forgiven. Right? The reason some of you don't have close friendships is because you're still dwelling on things that happened to you 20 years ago. Do you know what they said about my kid? Your kid is 47 years old. Get over it. <laughs> right? Well, you don't... Do, she came over and insulted my wallpaper. Who cares? It was probably ugly anyways. Stop dwelling on it. Get over it. Isaiah's telling us, look, you, you want to walk in the new. You can't walk in the new until you forget and stop dwelling. Right? It's, it's this picture of, hey, God's doing something new. That, that next command he gives us is you've got to see it. You've got to see it. And, and so the, the prayer that many of us need to pray is, God, give me eyes to see what you see. Speak to my heart. He says, don't just see it, but perceive it. Not just an awareness of what is going on, but a spiritual recognition that God is leading me into a new season. And as you begin to focus your time, your energy, and your effort on the new, it's going to be a whole lot easier to forget the past and stop dwelling on it. See, here, here's where some of us get wrong, because we love that idea, forget the past, stop dwelling on it, but, but we forget about now we've got to embrace the new. We've got to see what God is doing. And so we still spend all our time forgetting the past and not dwelling on it, and we wind up remembering it and dwelling on it. Because we didn't take the next step, and the next step is see what I'm doing. Perceive it. Right? It's, it's that picture of you're driving your car down the highway. you got two choices. You can look ahead at where you're going, or you can turn around and stare through the back window at where you've been. One of those is going to turn out well. And some of you are like, no, 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 i got a rear view mirror. I just stare in that thing. You stare in it long enough, you're going to wind up in the ditch. God is telling us, don't just forget it, but now see it. Watch it. And then he says, I am doing a new thing. And this is where our comfort is found. This is where our hope lies because it, God in his grace doesn't leave it on you to start the new thing. He says, I'm doing it. Now it springs up, right? It's, it's this present tense idea of we're sitting here thinking, I got to forget my past. I got to see what God is doing. I got to perceive it. And then maybe he'll make it happen. But these two statements are being made simultaneously. As you forget, as you stop dwelling, as you see and perceive, what you're going to see is God's already at work. So your broken, busted up marriage, God is already springing up new life into it. Before you've given a thought or read a book, he is at work in your life and at work in your heart. That child that you're praying for, God is doing it. He is already at work. Now it springs up. He is currently doing it. And so we're just, we're just saying, okay, God, let, help me see not just what you want to do, not just what you might do, not just what you could do. Help me see what you are doing right here, right now. Because he's at work. You need direction, he's already revealing it to you. You need provision, it's already on the way. You need strength and endurance, he is already putting that in your heart through the presence of the Holy Spirit. He is doing it. We trust in God's new things because it's God's plan. Right? I thank God all the time 
that he doesn't trust me enough to do all this by myself. Because I know I can't do it. I know my, my, the best use of my time, my energy, my resources is to say, Lord, where are you moving? Where are you working? And how can I be a part of it? Instead of saying, God, this is my plan. And if you would like to bless it a little, that'd be awesome. I mean, I mean at the end of your life, what do you want to say? Do you want to say, I did the best that I could with what I had? Or do you want to say, God used me in some ways that are still far beyond my comprehension? God gave me privileges that were way out of my league that I never could have earned. This is what he's promising us in Isaiah. Not just that you'll kind of grind through it and and endure it to the end, but he's saying, I'm doing something new. Now it's springing up. I'm already at work. So we want to devote our lives. We want to ask for vision. We want to ask for discernment to see where God is at work in our lives and be part of what he's doing. And then those last couple lines, he says, he's making a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The new thing God wants to do in you, in me, in us, does not depend on our circumstances. And what's really interesting there is the new thing is not, I will pluck you out of the wilderness. The new thing is not, I will place you in the land of milk and honey. The new thing is, I will make a way in the wilderness. The new thing he's doing is going to be right in the middle of where you are. So junior high, high school students, you're thinking, man, that's awesome. I can't wait to get out of this, get out of my house, and then I'm going to experience God in the new season. But he's doing it right here, right now, right where you are. In the wilderness, he is bushwhacking a path for you to follow him through. In your grief, in the hurt you feel over that divorce, in the loss that you feel, in all of these spaces, oftentimes we think the new thing will be when this is completely over and gone. God says, no, the new thing is here and now. I'm making a way in the wilderness. I'm bringing streams in the desert. See, in those dry and dusty seasons of life, it's such tremendous comfort to us to know God brings living water to us. And it doesn't depend on our external circumstances. I mean, moments like today are awesome where we can gather together and we can worship and we can sing and we can preach and we can pray. These are really good moments and they're moments where we feel alive and then you you go back to work, you go back to school, you go back home and it's dry and it's dusty and it's barren and you think, I just, I got to get back to where the water flows. But what Jesus told us, he said, whoever believes in me, streams of living water will flow through them. Right, the presence of God in your life does not depend on your external circumstances. His ability to bring life, hope, joy, and sustenance is not the end result when everything is made perfect, but it is your current reality in the middle of the desert. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to turn his back on you. He's going to come to you right in the middle of it. As I've... Um, thought about this the last couple weeks, there's a a thought, a picture that's kind of come to mind, right? And so I want you to think about is your past, your mistakes, your failures, whatever it is, right? So we've got the stuff we're, we're really excited about, and we remember where we've come from. You remember where you were born, right? And it, it defines you. It's part of who you are. And you, you, you love to point back to it, right? For, for me, this would be stuff like, I love to tell you stories about my grandpa, about the lessons I learned from him. I love to tell you about my wife and my kids and how much joy they bring me. I love to tell you about the mentors God has put in my life and, and how much they have spoken into my life. I, I love to tell you about where I went to school, right? I love to tell you about, you know, the degrees that I've earned. Because these are things that God has used in my life, but honestly, they're also they're things that I'm proud of. Okay, I, I worked hard. I've known some success. But for me, sometimes God's calling me into a new thing, but I'm still so focused on, well, look at all the awesome things he's done in the past that I'm not ready to walk into it. I didn't, and honestly, sometimes those are a little bit easier to deal with. The, the ones that really hurt, though, are the, the pain. 
When you think of the things that were done to you, you think of the ways that people harmed you, you think of the abuse, abandonment, you think of those that, that man, you thought they're always going to be there for you until they weren't. You think of the failures, you think of some of those other dreams for success you had and how they fell apart. See, and what happens to us is, is our past shapes us, but some of us, we let it start to define us. And we let that wait. It moves from just kind of stories we tell to who we are, right? And, and so you start to walk around, and you're attached to those stories, right? And, and they are part of who you are, and they're part of what you do. And you're in this season where you think, man, God's calling us into something new. He's told us our family's going to grow. And you start to kind of walk into it, but you get that tug, and you remember but we don't have a kid yet. He says, I'm going to lead you to this school. And you start to walk in it and you remember, but my family's not one that values education. He says, I'm going, to, I'm going to lead you into new life. Your marriage is going to have fresh, abundant love flowing through it. And you think, yes, Lord, that's what I want. And then you feel that tug and remember, but we don't, we don't know how to do that. Our family legacy is one of divorce and leaving, of avoiding conflict. God, we don't know how to walk in that. God says, I'm going to lead you into freedom. You say, yes, that's awesome. But then you remember, I've, I've always been the addict. I mean, from, from junior high, from high school on, I was the one leading the charge to the parties. I was the one that I get clean for a couple weeks, and then I fall back again. God's saying, hey, I'm going to lead you into a new season. You look for it, and you go for it, and, and think, yes, now, now here's where some of us are. You've heard these messages, and God has started to work in your life, right? And, and you've unhitched from it. But you have not unhitched from the capacity to pick it back up again. And so, so you've let it go. And God says, there's new life in your marriage. You say, awesome, let's go. And you're walking in it with your spouse. But then the fight happens. And you go right back, and you clip right back in. Right? And, and you decide to walk in it. Some of you you, you, you feel like the freedom is here. And you've unhitched from it. And you start to walk, but, but you screw up. Right? You look at the things you promised God and your spouse you'd never look at again. You tell the lies you promised you would never tell again. But in that moment, instead of deciding that was a mistake, Christ has forgiven me, instead you go back and completely reattach. This is just who I'm always going to be. And so we're just going to have to do our best to kind of Struggle our way through life carrying this with us. God tells us, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. And what he's saying to us is, as you see what I'm doing, you need to completely lose the capacity to pick those things up again. Who you are is not who you will always be. What you have done is not what you will always do. The pain you have experienced is not going to last for the rest of your life. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Here it is, right here, right now, away in the wilderness, streams in the desert. Paul later reiterates this idea to us. He tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, he says, the old has gone and the new has come. Right? When, when Jesus comes and restores you, he not only unhitches the weight of your sin, but he completely changes your identity. To where now, I can look back at the mistakes of my life. I can look back at a past full of pain and a past full of pride. And I can say, yes, that made me into who I am, but it is no longer who I am. So when I screw up, it doesn't mean I'm going to be like everyone who screwed up before me. When I make a mistake, it doesn't mean my life is destined to go down that path. I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing. This is God's message to us. And I told you at the beginning, I don't have any answers for you. I don't have any agenda for us. Except for us to come and just take some time and take some space to say, Lord, what do you want to do? Because you know what's going on in your heart. You know, the, you know the demons you're fighting. And 
And God's message is something new is coming. Now it springs up. He is doing it. So stop holding your past against him. Stop holding your past against yourself. Stop holding others' past against them. And just say, okay, Lord, if if this is your command, then I'll forget it. I'll stop dwelling on it. And I will begin to walk in this new life you have for me. Don't just unhitch from it. Lose the ability to pick it back up again. You might stumble, you might fall, but it's not going to stick this time. Because the old has gone and the new has come. You are in Christ. You are a new creation. Will you stand with me? I want to pray for you. If you're here this morning, and we bow your heads and close your eyes, if you're here this morning and you need God to do something new in your life, will you raise your hand so I can pray for you? God, you see each one of these needs. You see each each circumstance that has led them to this moment. And Lord, you see our desire to experience a fresh work of your Holy Spirit in us. So Lord, we, we come today and we lay down our agendas. We lay down our thoughts about how you should work. We lay down our hopes of what we want you to do. And we just stand before you, Lord, with open hands and open hearts saying, will you do something new? Give me eyes to see it. Give me a heart to perceive it. Right here in the middle of my wilderness and my desert, can I see your hand at work? Holy Spirit, will you come in your power and do for us what only you can do? We don't need another opportunity to talk to someone. God, we don't even need one more person to pray for us. But in this moment, Lord, we come and we are desperate for the work of your Holy Spirit in us. We're tired of trying to do it on our own. We're tired of trying to achieve it on our own. We're tired of trying to work our plans and our purposes. Lord, we need you to do something new. Breathe new life, breathe new hope, breathe new love. God, come and breathe healing, breathe salvation, breathe restoration. Lord, do what only you can do. We don't want to be satisfied in our efforts. We don't want to settle for what we can accomplish. But Lord, we come asking that you would attach our lives to your kingdom that we would see you as the one who knows us, who loves us, who has a plan for us. God, give us eyes to see how you are at work, hearts to perceive what you're doing. We pray in these moments, Lord, that you would speak strongly to us, that this would be the beginning of a new season of walking in your power and walking in your spirit. Lord, a new season of knowing that you're leading us and guiding us. A new season of surrendering to you in every moment. A new season of moving from just trusting in you to walking with you. Holy Spirit, come. Come in these moments and do what only you can do. Point our hearts to Jesus. May we receive his life and his hope. The band leads us in a, a few songs. I want to encourage you, find a spot to, to pray those prayers of God Will you do something new. You might want to do that in your seat. It, I would really encourage you, come find a spot at the front. Make that physical movement of God, I, I want to get from where I am to where you want me to be. And this is part of me seeing. This is part of me see, perceiving. I'm going to move from my spot into a place just symbolically, Lord, of saying, speak. Give me vision. Give me the ability to perceive what you're doing. So they're going to lead us through two or three songs. We've got plenty of time. I want to encourage you to make space, make, make allowances for the Lord to come and speak to you about what he wants to do.
Our pastors aren't going to pray for you. Our, our prayer team's not going to pray for you. God is going to speak to you about your problems, about your issues. The Spirit is here. It's our job to respond to Him. So as we pray, as we sing, as we pray, just find a spot, make those prayers. We're just going to take some time and see what the Lord wants to say to us. Change everything. Jesus, you change everything. Jesus, you change everything. 
we come to you thankful that your spirit is at work, that you're bringing life and you're bringing freedom, that you're restoring joy and imparting your love. I feel like for at least one, maybe, maybe more this morning, God's message is that to forget the past does not dishonor those that you've lost. To stop dwelling on it does not diminish their love and their influence in your life. But God is calling you into a new season. And it's going to require both hands and it's going to require both feet. So you don't let go of the memories, but you're letting go of the pain. You're letting go of the ability to move forward. And you will find a a deeper experience of joy and appreciation than you have ever known. To forget, to stop dwelling, to see what he's doing. What he's doing is always a new thing and it's always a good thing. So have an appreciation for what he has done, but don't reside there. Live here in this moment and in this season. God, we thank you that you speak directly to our situations and directly to our needs. And Lord, we ask that the same spirit that is at work in us right now would continue to make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Lord, we pray that the new life you have begun to bring, the things that have begun to fall away, that you would continue that work as we leave this place this morning. We thank you that your spirit is never restricted to a space, but that you have already gone before us. God, you've gone before us into our homes, into our places of work, and into our schools. You've gone before us into the temptations that we'll face this week. You've gone before us into the dark nights of the soul that are coming in the evenings. You've come before us, Lord, in those sleepless nights and the pain of the past that will come up. Lord, your spirit has gone before us. And in that space, you will make a way. You are doing a new thing. Lord, help us to see it and perceive it. This is not an event. It is a beginning. A new season of walking in the fullness of your spirit. A new season of hearing your voice and responding to you. A new season of sharing your life and your love with others. So Spirit, will you lead us? Will you guide us? Will you direct our steps and soothe our souls? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today as you go. May you go in the power of the Spirit. May you go knowing that his grace and mercy are abundant and enough for you. Hi, I'm Pastor Chris. Thanks for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, you can like it. You can also subscribe to see more content like this. If you're in the Tulsa area, we would love to see you at Christian Chapel on a Sunday morning. Thanks again for checking this out. I hope you have a great day.